In this lesson, we're going to look at mutations and how we actually get new alleles. So as a review, remember, DNA, RNA, protein trait. The, your genotype determines your phenotype. And that the environment does influence the expression of genes. So first off, what is a mutation? Well, a mutation is a change in the DNA sequence, so the actual code. So for example, this might be a small section of DNA, and a mutation would be going from an A to a C. That changes the code, and so that would be an example of a mutation. Now, mutations can happen in a couple different ways. We can have substitutions, and we can have additions or deletions. So let's look at substitutions. This means that you only change one nucleotide. In other words, you change one letter. And because you're only changing that one letter, it usually only changes one amino acid. So for example, if we change this A to a C, instead of this protein, we're going to get this protein. So it only changed that one amino acid. And now this may not seem like that big of a deal, but there are a lot of diseases and a lot of issues that are caused by only having one amino acid be different. This could actually completely change the functionality of this protein. Now addition and deletions, this is a lot worse at least potentially, because this can change the entire rest of the sequence after the mutation occurs. So here's my sequence, and notice that I have four codons. Now let's say I have an addition. This G has been added, not substituted, but added to the sequence. Now when I break it up into my codons, Every single codon that occurs after that mutation has been changed. And so this is going to completely change the protein and can have a huge impact. So what causes mutations? <clears throat> well, first off, DNA replication, it's not perfect. So every time your DNA is replicated, there's a chance that mistakes happen your body actually has a lot of ways to prevent these and to fix them when they happen but every now and then mistakes happen and you do get uh, mutations within your cells additionally environmental factors can change your DNA and when they do that we call them mutagens if they mutate your DNA we call them mutagens things like UV rays tobacco um, various types of chemicals, um, especially, you know, some of your industrial type chemicals, pesticides, things like that, can actually mutate your DNA. So the effect is, <clears throat> if you change the DNA code itself, then you'll change the protein, and if you change the protein, you can actually change the trait, or the phenotype. So if you change the genotype, you change the phenotype. Most of the time when you do this, it's bad. It's negative. Sometimes it doesn't have any effect. Um, it doesn't have an appreciable change. But most of the time it's negative. Things like cancer and other different types of diseases or disorders that um, are definitely negative. So for example, here I have some cells. And Here's my DNA code, and when I transcribe and translate this code, I get a certain protein. And this is a protein that goes on the outside of the cells and is a receptor protein, and it fits this hormone so that if the hormone is present, it tells the cell, don't divide. So it's a communication hormone. So normally that hormone will be released, it will fit into that receptor protein and it will tell all these uh, uh, cells it's not time to divide, so don't divide. 
But let's say this cell has a mutation. So it has changed a single nucleotide. And so now there is an actual change in the structure of that protein. Because of that mutation, the protein folds differently and has a different shape, which now means that that hormone that said don't divide, it doesn't fit into this new mutated protein. And so instead of the cell getting the message to not divide, it doesn't get any message at all. And so now it's going to start to divide. And it divides and divides and divides until eventually you have a tumor. So you have gotten cancer. Um, and this is the kind of thing that can happen with uh, things like being out in the sun too much. Um, the UV rays can mutate your cells, uh, mutate your DNA, and cause cancer. Tobacco use can do the same thing and give you cancer in this way. Here's another example of a negative um, mutation. Albinism is not beneficial to these animals. They're trying to blend in. Uh, there's two deer in this picture. One of them blends in a whole lot more than the other. Here's an example of a neutral mutation. So there's really no difference in how well you can live and survive and things like that with blue eyes versus brown eyes. So that would be a mutation that has not really affected you. And then some mutations are actually beneficial, and they lead to what we call evolution. So here's an example of a beneficial mutation. These are uh, cousins of each other. And if you notice, the one with a short neck, there's a lot of food around it in easy reaching distance. Whereas the giraffe has a beneficial mutation that has resulted in a longer neck because now it can reach higher and eat food that no one else can and therefore it aids in its survival. So finally let's look at how can mutations be actually passed on. So how can a mutation that you get get passed on to your child? Only mutations that occur in gametes, so your sex cells, are actually passed on. Because only the DNA in your egg or your sperm cells turns into a child. And this is good. This means you can't pass on things like skin cancer. Um, you can only pass on mutations that have occurred in those gametes.